So you see the, the flow waveforms? Yep. Let's look at the next one. Okay, they're nice, they're wide. So it's over here, it's, it's not like these little subtle, you know, bumps that are frequent. That means they, they might be on uh, the, the, higher, the higher portion, right? They might be hyperventilating, so they're breathing shallow. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, if you're high mountains on the spontaneous, they're pulling really a lot, probably work of breathing. Uh, that might be because they're now a little bit on the lower side uh, of your uh, pressure. You know, they're here. They're they're not recruited, so they're they're trying to pull in. Um, and then you want the, the these brown ones, nice uh, low amplitude, like a nice little hill. That that's telling you right away. Okay, you know, she's ni nice, slow breathing, and it's perfect. So, like I, I said, uh, now we're in the weaning phase. So what we're going to do here is we're extending the T high. Mm -hmm. So that, that, in, that inspiratory time, there, it's longer. So now you're going to have less of the releases. So you're reducing the bulk ventilation during weaning. And then after you're, you're reducing the bulk ventilation by stretching out that uh, T high. So the weaning phase is stretch it out until ultimately you get to a CPAP level that has an uh, a uh, optimized FRC, mm -hmm. which which uh, you know we can extubate on on a CPAP uh, level, and what's great about it uh, is y it's allowing you spontaneous uh, respiration the whole time, um, and, and you're recruited much better because of the mean pressure. So you know it's a really good mode. I find I I, I like it for patients that hover on pressure support of six, PIPA six. And you know they're like you know just waiting to excavate. Maybe there's other things that are occurring. It, it, this is perfect, you know, because I, I find that it will uh, uh, allow the diaphragm to to maintain its strength because we're we're not giving it a vacation. You know, the diaphragm yeah. uh, we we lose uh, despite, we lose function very rapidly, especially in controlled modes. So the variation in re the respiratory uh, tidal volume rate is more physiologically normal. There's a variation and the patient can breathe all throughout the cycle and it's a non-triggered mode so the dyssynchrony as long as your frc is well recruited and, and you're respecting uh, where you should be on the pressure boom you're having a uh, good work of breathing okay okay and don't forget that we have the auto release that one here mm -hmm. which you can access in the additional settings so the auto release guarantees that that patient will uh, expire uh, Seventy-five percent of its expired flow rate. Assuming, let's say it's a hundred, uh, we're we're going to uh, air trap at seventy-five percent. So once seventy-five percent of the peak expiratory flow rate is um, attained, it, it cuts it off. So this here in a, in the APR uh, APRV setting should never drop, and you shouldn't be using APRV as like you know here and then a long drop, and then you know it's not it's not really two levels of PEEP. It's CPAP mm -hmm. with brief releases that hardly change the amplitude to bulk ventilate, to excrete a large amount of CO2. And there's quite a lot of CO2 be, because of the long diffusion uh, uh, that's occurring uh, with that, that, that long uh, high PEEP. Okay? okay? So that's kind of how you would wean. Uh, and and when, when you finally wean, you can wean, a, you know, some doctors are comfortable weaning a peep of a 10, 12, but if you have a guy with a super big abdomen, then it's like, look, you're not gonna extubate him on a peep of six very efficiently with a nice recruitment. You wanna optimize, in my opinion, you, you should optimize the patient's recruitment, ideal FRC before you extubate, and then that person has to maintain that.